Wednesday, everybody. Uh, yesterday, you watched a couple videos. You saw Flippin' Physics and Mr. Anderson uh, discuss some basic stuff about waves. Now, I'm under the impression that you guys have studied waves back in middle school. In fact, I know you did. I know in chemistry class, at least Mr. Nash spends quite a bit of time going over waves. I know that you know a lot of this stuff, but I got to make sure you have the vocabulary set. So I have a flow chart that I would like to go over, sort of that um, gets into a lot of the a lot of what we did today. I don't know if this is actually, it is recording. Um, your today though is my yesterday and you're gonna watch this tomorrow. So, but that'll be your today. Tricky stuff. This is what we're gonna do. I'd like to walk you through this flow chart, but if I were to just give it to you all at once, it would be overwhelming. So instead, got it covered up and we're going to sort of walk our way through it you guys good with that all right so at the top of a nice clean sheet of paper i would like you to write down the word waves and as mr anderson nicely explained last time waves could be broken down into two broad categories mechanical and electromagnetic and the fundamental difference between those two was not understood until 1897. But a mechanical wave need or needs a medium to travel through, whereas an electromagnetic wave does not need a medium to travel through. A fundamental difference. Now, for a mechanical wave, let's say a water wave, what is the medium? That's right, Tyler. It's water. Uh, sound, what's the medium? Nice, Tessa. It's air. Good. Uh, earthquake? Yeah, it's the earth, obviously. Good. So mechanical waves need a medium to travel through. Electromagnetic waves, on the other hand, do not. There we go. Now, in terms of types of waves, if we were to break mechanical waves down into two broad categories, as Mr. Anderson did last class, um, they would be longitudinal and transverse Two more vocabulary words you need to make sure you understand. And the key to understanding these two terms, longitudinal waves, the particles move in the same direction as the energy in the wave. Let's see. So uh, how do I put that? Like sound. Sound is a really good example of a longitudinal wave. And basically... The particles in the medium travel along this way as the energy is traveling out. So even though you often see sound looking like a sine wave, it's not. It's actually a transverse wave where one particle hits the next, hits the next, hits the next. So a longitudinal wave, longitudinal wave would be a uh, sound where the particles move in the same direction. A transverse wave there it is, there it is. See, in class, I'd be using a giant spring for this. The particles actually move perpendicular to the direction of the wave. Now, electromagnetic waves are defined actually as, as transverse waves, but what we're looking at there is not um, just in one direction, but we say that electromagnetic waves are actually, there we go, an electric field and a magnetic field oscillating perpendicular to each other simultaneously. I think you should all stand up and do that right now. Got it? The electromagnetic waves. All right. So if those are a couple broad categories, longitudinal and transverse, some nice examples would be for longitudinal, we have sound. For an earthquake, it's called the P wave, which stands for primary and springs. And if I had my classroom set up here, we'd have all sorts of springs that we would look at um, oscillating perpendicular, or I'm sorry, parallel to the direction of motion. 
um, transverse waves. A great example is the wave. If you're at a game and everybody stands up right now, we could do that in class. You ready? All right. We'll start with you, Kendall. So Kendall goes up and then down. And then we have Megan, Tyler. Who's next? Patrick. And then we go across the line. Serena. Who's after that? Oh, that's right. Josie, Tessa. And finally, at the very end, we'd have Hannah. The rest of you who aren't sitting in that row, sorry, you're just, you're left out. Um, but the wave, S wave, which stands for secondary waves, and springs. I forgot the G. So we're working down. When we talk about light, light does not need a medium to travel through space. This was not agreed upon until after 1905. And the speed of light in a vacuum is constant. This is the letter C. That velocity is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. You have seen C in that formula. That's right. E equals mc squared. Good. All right. If I continue on, we can picture or draw like the example that we have here, a nice sine curve where the wavelength would be from peak to peak or trough to trough. And the amplitude, the amplitude is actually measured just as the displacement from equilibrium. It's not the whole height. It's actually just half the height. If I go over to the other side where I'm talking about electromagnetic, we're going to have different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Some of those names that you should be familiar with possibly are radio, infrared, visible part of the spectrum. UV light, X-rays, and gamma rays. And the visible spectrum, as you can see from that picture there, it's going to stretch from roughly 400 nanometers, violet light, up to 750 for red. All right, so some simple ideas about waves. Good, we got a lot of vocabulary words coming at us. And next, how do we define velocity, frequency, and wavelength? Well, the velocity of the wave is how fast it's traveling, carrying that energy from one place to another. The units for that are meters per second. Frequency is going to be measured in hertz, and wavelength is meters. So if we do velocity equals frequency times wavelength, then I can see this is one over seconds. That's going to be sec uh, meters per second. I'm sorry, that's going to be meters. It's going to give me meters per second. The speed of light, C, is going to be frequency times the wavelength. Good. You wrote those down. You feeling all right? Now, last thing, last thing for a moment, is that there's four properties that all waves exhibit. Reflection, refraction, interference, and diffraction. Those are vocabulary words you have to be comfortable with. So if I were to zoom out. It seemed easy. Oh, because I think it is for students of your caliber. Um, However, there's a lot of vocabulary words mixed in here. Mechanical, electromagnetic, medium, longitudinal, transverse, visible spectrum, and two new formulas. Velocity is frequency times wavelength, and the speed of light is frequency times